Andre Segovia Show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Andres, and in this episode that I'm doing from my home office today, not the studio, I, I want to go over this uh, this intro, this short interview that NTD uh, Business had with the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors, um, Lawrence Yoon, I believe his name is. Let me check. Yeah, Lawrence Yoon. Um, so this is from February 17th, titled, A Few Houses on the Market Contribute to High Housing Prices. Now, before I get into any of this, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, my channel and my website, the place where the entirety of my show lives is my website, www.theandrosegova.com, and you can learn more about me there, where... So you can see anything that interests me. Uh, generally, I do talk about real estate tech and just general life advice or life coaching. But uh, there's a lot more there in terms of what I call off the record, the show within the show that only lives there because uh, reasons. <laughs> well, besides that, um, because this is a real estate centric episode, I also have my real estate website, www.segoviares.com, where all my real estate resources are there. I'm associated with Mark One uh, Real Estate, uh, located in Orange County, but I service Orange County and Los Angeles County here in Southern California. I could service more areas, but this is the, the the area that I really focus more on. So, because I mentioned that, I gotta mention also that my license number is zero one nine zero nine four four nine. So anyway, with that out of the way, I want to get into this episode here because it touches upon something that I covered a lot during the the early early days of the lockdown last year, and that's where, with respect to forbearance. And just the the synopsis of this being um, the forbearance and foreclosure programs being a lifeline for many Americans during the pandemic. That is true to an extent. The question was, was it, did you need to use it? If you didn't have to, don't. So for those of you watching on my website, www.theandrewsaglobal.com, accompanying this episode in the show notes down below is the embedded episode of my interview with Matt Cater from Summit Lending discussing just that, everything and everything about forbearance. Um, so if you really wanna know about that, if you're still considering that, if you have been able to recover financially because of all that's going on, and it's something that you're looking into because the federal government is expanding that program to find out what it all means, I'm leaving uh, references and resources there for you to get learned on this. Let's get to this interview, shall we? This is Lawrence Yoon, the Chief Economist at the National Association of Realtors, on to discuss the phenomenon of the fewer houses contributing to higher um, housing prices. Uh, well, we have a shortage of inventory uh, and the economy is not fully back up. So for those uh, families uh, who still are struggling to find job, uh, this mortgage forbearance will certainly buy the time uh, to assure that they can find job and hopefully they can get out of the forbearance period. Uh, but the fact that they are in forbearance means we simply don't have enough inventory. Uh, housing shortage uh, with a strong buyer demand uh, is pushing up home prices to record high levels. Two things there. Uh, he's mentioning uh, low inventory and strong buyer demand. Depending on where it is, I can only speak to what is its own industry in California. California, uh, if you hear these national housing numbers, that's national. Don't count California in it. California, it's literally its own industry. And over here, we've been dealing with a housing crisis for a long time. The housing affordability crisis triggered mostly by the inavailability of units to be uh, sold and also because of the lack of new construction for those things. But there's a lot of construction going on. I'm not going to dive into the details of that. Just know that high-rise apartments for rent are not houses to buy. Big difference. So um, in reference to strong buyer demand, we've had a situation where you had high earners that have used to just rent and during lockdowns didn't like being cooped up in a room, taking their money and buying because there were high earners that just chose to rent, never prioritize buying for X, Y, Z reasons. And then when this happened, they're like, I, I, want a, I want my own house. And they went out and bought it. And for those that haven't been able to buy, they are in a bidding war for some of these properties. 
And during the pandemic, well, earlier in the pandemic, we saw a lot of homeowners, they were afraid to put their houses on the market. They didn't want people visiting, etc. Are we still seeing these type of fears? Uh, there is some uh, fear, especially among the elderly population who are more vulnerable. Uh, but now with the vaccination getting uh, steadily distributed, uh, we hope that picture change uh, so that by spring or summer of this year, uh, we see more listings which have been delayed. Uh, furthermore, a good sign is that home builders are becoming much more active. They are building more homes, uh, which naturally means increased inventory uh, later part of 2021. So again, this is the national level, and that's what this is very, this is in generalities, not happening in California. I can tell you that this kind of construction that he's referring to, do not count California in it. That's the problem that we have here in California. But we did have something that just went into effect that I covered on my program uh, called Proposition 19 that was a, a tax um, that uh, was disguised as a tax benefit, but it's actually a tax uh, to um, citizens or residents of California that could actually have the confidence uh, the, or boost the confidence that he was referring to and being able to get people to sell their property because this proposition was actually targeted to um, more senior communities or uh, senior owners of properties that have been uh, too shy of or uh, just never considered selling the property. And this Proposition 19 is an incentive, a way to incentivize them to sell their property um, to, and reap the tax benefits thereof. I'm not going to get into Proposition 19 on this one. I've done episodes on that, so check it out. But uh, we have yet to see how that might affect. But the whole thing about um, the vaccines possibly being some kind of confidence boost for some sellers that were very concerned um, about being exposed to, to the virus, it it could be. It could be. Uh, but again, we have yet to see it. We hear some analysts call it a housing bubble. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, we are in an imbalanced situation with too much demand, not enough supply. Uh, Ten years ago, when housing market did crash, uh, there was an oversupply and also there was an artificial demand with those funny subprime mortgages. Fortunately, in today's environment, uh, the all the people who are getting mortgages, it is tightly underwritten. So different scenario, prices are rising simply from the supply and demand, not due to the excesses of mortgage credit and such. So I would say the home prices are on firm ground. I just hope we have more inventory to moderate the price appreciation. Thank you for mentioning that. And that's important to note because, oh, yeah, this is another housing bubble. In order to understand what a housing bubble is, you have to understand what caused those things in the first place. We had two market crashes in, if we're going to start from today, mm -hmm. rewind 30 years, at least 30 years, you have two uh, uh, mortgage crises. And before that was savings and loan crisis of the 1980s. In the case of the 90s, it was a similar issue that was even uh worse in the 2000s and that was people buying things they couldn't afford that was a simple fact and what uh lawrence Jung was just referring to about the tightening of the lending rules yeah that's what some people say i don't qualify to buy well now you know and some people are upset that they're not qualified to buy and say like, okay so do we want to go back to pre-mortgage crash uh, lending rules were like, I can't afford to buy. That's okay. We'll just write the number down that you that you do. Did you make this much more? Don't worry. There will be no income verification. Is that what you want? To get a property that you can't afford? Or be in a position where you don't have to worry about not qualifying because you are qualified? When we get the inventory, do you have any idea what type of correction we might see? Uh, I don't think uh, there will be any price decline in most cities. Uh, perhaps in Manhattan or say very expensive San Francisco market, uh, there could be some uh, modest price uh, adjustment uh, as the office workers can now work from anywhere. Uh, and if that is the case, uh, why stay in expensive regions? So there could be a modest price reduction in uh, New York City or San Francisco, but the vast number of markets in the US, uh, prices will continue to increase at a solid pace uh, we hope in more moderate fashion. Great. Dr. Yoon, really appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much. Thank you. And there you have it, folks.
supply and demand the reason for all these prices that um can stay up on housing and keep going up um a lot of people have because like oh it's the bad time to buy because the pandemic and price is going to crash because people's incomes will be affected not everybody's income was affected a lot of people still worked and when you have a situation we have high earners that did not even consider buying that ended up becoming the buyers the prices kept going up I've said it before and I'll say it again. Real estate is the best investment you can make. It's the most solid investment that you can make because you do something tangible. The only income that goes up every year is rental. With the exception of what happened in the pandemic, depending on who you are, some there are some property owners that were just not agreeable and there were other ones that worked tirelessly with their tenants to all, because we're all in this together when this whole thing was demanded by the government to literally stop working. Um, so with all this being said, it's yeah. Uh, where do I see things going from from here? It's it's interesting because uh, I'm dealing in California, where again we're our, our own industry. We have multiple different factors that are government based, that are federal. Uh, let me rephrase that: that are that are state based, locally based, and then of course the federal side about the forbearance and foreclosure programs, where some sellers might hesitate to sell, some of them might sell. Uh, we'll see how all this goes. Anyway, that does it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my stuff at www.theandrewsegovia.com for everything related to the show, real estate resources. www.segoviares.com. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.